Okay, let's uh, let's look at the eigenvector eigenvalue relationship. For those of you who are in uh, differential equations, you've seen this before, but maybe not uh, in the same way that we're gonna we're gonna look at it. So to motivate this, to motivate this, let's look in R two because we can make nice pictures there and get a handle on how these how this how this works. So we're gonna let A be the the matrix one six. Five, two, okay, and the idea is so. The question is, how does how does this matrix A act on vectors in R two? Okay, and it's this action that leads us to a special case of of eigenvectors. So. Um, let's make some axes over here. And okay, let's just see what does A do to the vector one zero? All right. And A of one zero turns out to be uh, one five. So in this picture, if I have the vector one zero here, this is x, then then um, a of x is one five. So what it does is it rotates it however many degrees, and also lengthens it. Okay. So we have that action. Let's just fiddle around with some other. Let's look at the other basis vector here from, from uh, the standard normal basis. A of 0, 1 is just the right-hand column there. It's 6, 2. So if you take this guy, 0, 1, uh, it becomes out of here at 6, 2. So We'll call this a sub y and call this y. So again, what does it do? It rotates it however many degrees and lengthens it. Okay. So now let's look at a um, a of six minus five, and we have to compute this. This is one six five two times 6 minus 5, and this equals um, uh, 6 minus 30, that's minus 24, and then 30 minus 10 is minus 20. Okay, so out here at, oh, I need a new color. Um, so out here at 6 minus 5, Is my vector. What does A do to that? Well, minus 24, 20, you can't see it on here. If I factor out a minus 4 from this, I get, I get 6 minus 5. So all it does is lengthens it, right? So I go from here um, all the way, way, way out to minus 24, 20. So there's no rotation. And so this, vec this vector um, gets fixed under this, under this relationship. Okay, and so what you find out is that, in this case, minus 4 is an eigenvalue for A, and 6 minus 5 is the corresponding eigenvector. That's not a really good definition, but um, hopefully this picture gave some motivation to what's going on. So um, in this game, A, A acts on any vector in R2 by either stretching it or rotating it, except for two. And they're the ones that lie on the line through these, through these eigenvectors. Okay. So 
here's here's a more formal definition. A vector x, and um, make this right. A non-zero vector, so x is not the zero vector. A vector x is an eigenvector corresponding. to a number lambda called the eigenvalue that satisfies satisfies the equation ax equals lambda x right and so this is this is the major um, major equation there so from before what we said was um, here, this is eigenvalue and eigenvector. So, so for our example, lambda equals minus four is an eigenvalue of a that corresponds to eigenvector in this case six minus five. Okay, and um, so our goal really is to understand why how this works and to be able to compute these because they show up everywhere and we use them for, for other things like solving differential equations. All right, so the goal here is to solve the matrix equation AX equals lambda x and it's important it's important that a is n by n okay a is n by n all right so a is n by n lambda is a constant and so x is n by one a vector okay so anytime you solve you're always setting stuff equal to zero so we're going to take a x minus lambda x and set that equal to the zero vector And so when you factor the x out, you get a minus lambda x equals zero. Now the weird thing here is that a is n by n, lambda is one by one, and so to make this a matrix identity, we have to slide in there the identity matrix. All right, so, so this is a matrix. We're gonna call it B. And what are we solving here? We're solving the matrix equation BX equals zero, or even better, we're looking for the null space of B, right? using that notation from, from this course. All right, first and foremost, um, remember, if B, if B is invertible, then BX equals zero has exactly one solution, and that solution, then BX equals has exactly one solution, and that solution is only the trivial solution. So if B is invertible, then X is zero, the zero vector, and um, we've broken we've broken this part. Okay, so we assume. So we have to assume then, or we force. Well, we're going to make the assumption, but we force B to be um, singular. Okay, and the determinant of a singular matrix, in this case, B is zero. Or in other words, the determinant of A minus lambda I is zero, right? And this will give us 
non-zero um, non-zero solutions once we find out uh, once we find lambdas to make this thing um, not uh, the determinant zero so okay this equation so this thing so definition the characteristic equation of A is just this thing in the box <laughs> here. It's an equation it's an equation in lambda and values of lambda give us the eigenvalues of A. So when you solve the characteristic equation, you get the you get the eigenvalues of A, including multiplicities. And so if lambda sub i has multiplicity i greater than one, then we say Lambda equaling lambda i has algebraic multiplicity equal to i, right? It's just the number of repeats for a given for a given eigenvalue. Okay, well, finding determinants of anything bigger than a 2x2 two two or even a 3x3 three three is a nightmare, and so we'll show in this course, um, once we get past 3 and 4, that at some point it's actually impossible to do by hand every time, and that there's other algorithms for finding, um, for finding the eigenvalues. And, and that's something I would never get to or even think to get to in a, a differential equations course, but, but that's down the road. Right now we're sort of taking those first um, steps and reviewing what we did in um, differential equations and adding some theory to it, right? Okay, so let's go back to our example. And we're going to find the eigenvalues of A, where A is the matrix 1, 6, 5, 2, right? Okay. So what we're doing is we're taking the determinant of a minus lambda i, which is the determinant of 1, 6, 5, 2, minus lambda 0, 0, lambda, right? Setting that equal to 0. Okay, so this says now I have the determinant of 1 minus lambda 6, 5, 2 minus lambda, you said that guy equal to 0. And then we do the lambda minus 2, lambda minus 1, minus 30 equals 0. Now you do the determinant. And get this quadratic. And factor it and give us the eigenvalues minus 4 and 7. Okay, so the eigenvalues of A equal this set minus 4 and 7. Okay, so to each eigenvalue, there is a set of eigenvectors. The set might only have one thing in it, or it could have multiple, like whatever the multiplicity is. So we take these one at a time. So we let, we let lambda equal minus 4. And again, what we want to solve is a minus lambda i x equals 0. This is what we're solving. So in this case, it's 
a minus a minus 4, so plus 4i x equals 0. This is what we're solving. And when you do that, you get um, 5, 6, 5, 6, x1, x2 equals 0, 0. Okay, so now we're solving the augmented matrix like this. So you kill row 2. You see there's one free variable, um, which I'm going to use as x2. And so this says um, this says 5x1 equals minus 6x2. So x1 is minus 6 fix, 6 minus 6 fifths x2. Okay. So x is x1, x2. This is minus 6 fifths x2, x2 which is x2 minus 6 fifths 1. All right. So any any value I choose for x2, which is my free variable, will give me an eigenvector corresponding to negative 4. So it's nice if you pick it to make your um, entries integers. So I'm going to pick x2 to be, what, minus 5? And so x now equals 6 minus 5. And we have found this is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals minus 4. Okay, so we found that guy. Now we do it again. Lambda equals 7. So we're, 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 we're solving a minus 7i x equals 0. And in this case, you get minus 6, 6, 5 minus 5, 0, 0, which becomes 1 minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And after a little bit of work, you get that x equals 1, 1 is the eigenvector. Okay. Okay, so um, going back up to my notation before, we have a minus lambda i x equals 0. I'm going to recall this b, so now we're looking at bx equals 0 just to be cleaner, but it's assumed that b is this a minus lambda i n. Okay, so again, solutions are the null space of B. Now, before we showed that the null space of any matrix, I'm just going to keep using B. To show the null space of B is a subspace of Rn. And in this special case, we call this the eigenspace of A corresponding to lambda. And sure enough, you can find a basis for an eigenspace. Right? And that turns out to be the basis vectors for the null space of B. Okay. And this is really going to get explored in the, uh, in the homework problems. All right. So um, here's a theorem that I gave you as a fact, but 
Um, you know, if a matrix A is lower or upper, triangular, then um, the eigenvalues of A equal the diagonal of A. Right? And if, if the matrix is not invertible, if, if A is singular, then zero is one of the eigenvalues. Okay. So you can't have the zero vector in the eigenvectors, but you can have a zero eigenvalue. All right, and so this reminds me of a wonderful story from a story from Diffie Q's. I had a really rough group many years ago at CMA, um, some very angry Emmys, and they were angry just across the board. Every class, they were sort of just mad at the school and mad at me and everyone else. They were even mad at Holden. Like, that's impossible. You can't be mad at Mike Holden. Anyways, um, I had them doing finding solutions to an ODE, and I guess I'd said, you know, oh, if, if it was three or more, I would give you the eigenvalues or give you something. So whatever matrix I used, it was like 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 2, 3, 0, 3, 3, 4. Um, I just screwed that up. has to be a zero. So many steps. And then it was like zero, 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 four. All right. So this is upper triangular. So the eigenvalues of A are just the diagonal, one, two, three, and four. There's no work to do. Well, okay, everyone tried to, tried to go A minus lambda I. They tried to take the determinant of this four by four matrix after putting in the, the minus lambda. And as you can imagine, it became horrible. But you don't need that because it was upper triangular and so you get the eigenvalues for free. And it turned out to be a really easy problem that everyone blew and took up all this time and blah, 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 and it blew up. Um, and so this is very helpful. And we're going to show here next week how to use this theorem to, to, to get our eigenvalues without um, computing the characteristic equation. But that's still a ways to go. Okay, okay so let's look at... Uh, a definition here, the definition of similarity. So a matrix A is similar to a matrix B if there exists some matrix P invertible such that P inverse AP equals B. Now you might remember this. from a previous homework problem. And I brought it up because I knew we were going to get to this. So the transformation that we looked at before took A to P inverse AP. This is called the similarity transformation. So this is the definition for similar. If there exists some P such that P inverse AP equals B, and like I said, we're moving through this pretty slowly, but um, uh, it'll be it'll be shown pretty soon here how to find this p. Uh, not today, but soon. Okay. And so the last theorem I'm going to hit you with is this, and this is often maligned. So if A and B are similar. then the characteristic equation for A 
equals the characteristic equation for B. This also implies they have the same eigenvalues. However, um, however, the converse is not true. Um, I don't want to say it that way. I'm going to say it this way. However, if A and B have the same eigenvalues, including multiplicities, it does not imply that A is similar to B, right? And here's why, check this out. So we're gonna let A be the matrix two, one, zero, two. And B is the matrix two, zero, zero, two. The eigenvalues of A are two and two. So two is multiplicity, algebraic multiplicity two. And the eigenvalues of B are two and two. You just read them off the diagonal. But A is not similar to B. Uh, and that's because the characteristic equations are just a little bit different. Um, actually, that's not why. I just saw that. Holy macro. Okay, yeah. So what I said before is true. The converse isn't the same. Um, so all we know is that A is not similar to B because we can't find we can't find P inverse such that B is equal to P inverse A P. That's why. Sorry. Okay. Um, that should be, oh, I got homework. So this is, which homework is this? Darn it. I think I'd have it written down somewhere. Convenient. That's the problem with having everything online is that uh, if you don't have your computer open, you're left to sit here and talk to fill in the space while you're trying to log into 15 different passwords to get to, thankfully they're all saved, but you go, still gotta click through, and then you keep clicking, and then you click some more, and that keeps going and going like the Energizer Bunny. And then you see that you're on homework six. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so I think we had problems from 4.1. We also have problems from five, sorry, 4.4, 5.1, 12, 16, and 30. And 5.2, 10, 16, and 24. And so these are going to be due not on Monday, but they're going to be due on Wednesday of next week, which is, um, what is that, the 7th? Due Wednesday, October 7th at 1400. So I knew this semester we wouldn't be always having Monday. Monday due dates. Um, in fact, I didn't want that. But um, so here we are. We're due next Wednesday, the seventh, and uh, I might add a little more. We'll see. All right. See you in a bit.